Did Rally Roots screw me over? Did Rally Roots rip me off? Hey everyone, Dave the NC Picker here, back in the garage, ready to pull my eBay orders. I sell stuff on eBay. If you didn't know, I think most of you know. But if you're new here, I sell stuff on eBay. This channel is me pulling the orders and other things like that, telling you about life as a reseller or just a weirdo, whatever you want to call me. I have an interesting hook for today's video and we're going to do it in a little bit. So if you clicked because of this interesting hook, welcome. Basically, I went out and I bought a mystery box from Rally Roots on whatnot. This was not like a pre-planned thing. This was just a spur of the moment, Dave's terrible with money kind of moment. I have a problem when it comes to spending money, especially on whatnot. And I got a notification that Rally Roots was on there, who I don't know personally at all. I'm pretty sure he doesn't know I exist either. But, well, I guess I know he exists, so we'll give him that. I know he exists, he doesn't know I exist. But anyways, I bought one of his mystery boxes on whatnot. And it was so expensive. <laughs> It was so much money. It was like an astronomical amount of money. It's the kind of money that's like a budget buster. You know, I use my business flipping account, figuring this is the goal of this was to do a flip, was to take this item that I bought, this mystery box, and then resell it for a profit, hopefully, on the internet. But I'm not sure if that's gonna be possible. And we'll talk about that. We'll open the box in a little bit. I'll tell you the insane amount of money I spent on it. And we'll maybe together we'll figure out if it's worth it. I might need your help. It's not something I usually buy and sell, but I'm gonna have to sell these so that I can, you know, refill my bank account. First off, we sold Thief, PC big box version for $18.56. So if you see this out there, this is a pretty good one to grab for sure. And that's pre-owned. Okay, and I'm gonna pull something out of FL18 because we sold an order over here too. As I tell you that I called up eBay about my negative feedback. So if you missed the last episode, I got some negative feedback because the buyer said the item they received was not as described. They basically said, hey, this thing you sent me, it was a phone grip, like a pop socket type of thing called no snap and they said oh yeah this was uh, plastic and I ordered metal but it was definitely metal They're, the buyer's wrong and I don't think it's intentional but they are incorrect on this front and so I figured since I offer free returns I sent him a message and I said hey I'll give you a free return I'll send you a label you'll get a hundred percent refund all this stuff I uh, just drop it in the mailbox just hit print drop it in the mailbox full return will come your way and the buyer said no that's not worth my effort I'm not gonna do that I'm just gonna keep it basically and of course leave the negative feedback that they gave me and now mind you they gave the negative feedback before ever talking to me, before asking me any questions, before asking for assistance, just straight negative feedback, incorrectly given because it was actually metal. Their complaint was that this thing was aluminum or was uh, plastic when it is indeed aluminum, but I digress. We talked about that last episode if you want to see it in detail. I sold this book. It is Learn Windows PowerShell in a Lun Month of Lunch. It's an interesting concept for a book. I paid uh, 50 cents or a dollar for that and I sold it for $19.90 plus shipping, $19.90 plus shipping. Yeah, Anyways, so I reached out to eBay and I was like, hey, you know, this customer left me negative feedback. I did send the correct item. Even though I sent the correct item, I offered a full refund. I offered to send them prepaid label and they're not willing to work with me. Can you help me out with this negative feedback? Because I mean, there's nothing I can do. I've got negative feedback. There's no way to assist a customer who doesn't want to be assisted, right? How do you help a customer who doesn't want help? And uh, <laughs> which I can tie that into a dentist story today too, by the way. I sold this little guy who's from the California Raisins. He sold for $8. I got him at the flea market for like a buck and I sold him for eight bucks plus shipping. Will Vinton Claymation California ra Raisin Rudy Bag Bagaman? Bagaman. Applause. So anyways, eBay proceeded to tell me basically, hey Dave, you're screwed. There's nothing we can do. There's no way to prove beyond a shadow of a doubt that the customer received the right item. And because of that, because there's no objective proof that he received the right item, I have to let the feedback stand. There's nothing I can do. And she said the only way she can remove the feedback is if I give him a full refund. 100% refund without him sending the item back. So that's like basically feedback extortion on eBay's front. Like I'm not really sure why that would be their goal. <laughs> it's funny because the first thing they say to me is they're like, hello, David. Thank you for being an eBay customer for 19 years. That's the first thing they say to me. You'd think like 19 years of loyal patronage would get me some sort of like, hey, this guy's been selling forever, been buying forever, has a great track record, 100% positive feedback, top rated seller, has sold hundreds of these phone grips and never gotten a complaint about them, maybe we'll give him the benefit of the doubt and remove this negative feedback since he offered to help the customer out. You'd think that would be how eBay takes it, but no. They're just like, yeah, hey, you're screwed. Nothing you can do. 
sorry. <laughs> I mean, I was a little annoyed at eBay. I'm not even annoyed at the customer, like whatever, I kind of get it, like being too lazy to send something back. But the whole eBay not being willing to work with me, when it clearly shows that I did my best to take care of the customer, you can clearly see I've sold tons of this item before. This sold off topic board game, a game for the slightly off, and it's a ladies night board game. Sold that for 10 bucks plus shipping. I think I paid a buck or two. So yeah, eBay is not willing to work with me. <sighs> I was thinking like there's got to be a way that maybe I'll talk to someone else. Maybe it's just a matter of talking to the right representative. Like this person was pretty rude and just like wasn't really interested in helping at all. When at the end of the day, like anyone could see that I'm not out there with malicious intent. And again, it's one negative feedback. It doesn't really matter, but it felt kind of good to have 100% positive feedback for a while here. So it's a little depressing that the thing that makes me go down from 100% is this, but I'm on my way to get another negative feedback with how I'm dealing with another situation. So, you know, whole separate thing. Uh, Super Mario Galaxy we sold for 10 bucks, 90 cents, not worth as much as it used to be but it comes with the manual and everything like that. And that went, that's going to Oregon. Oregon, Oregon, Oregon. But I mean, okay, so the dentist, I went to the dentist today. And again, if you're new here, there's a whole saga the last couple episodes about the dentist and getting a root canal and a crown because I've had this issue with my tooth. But the first, my actual dentist is terrible, is what I've decided. Now, I don't wanna be held liable. So how about I say it this way? In my opinion, <laughs> My current dentist is terrible, although I'm not sharing their name anyways, so it's not a big deal. I just, I don't think they're very good. They didn't seem to do a good job. They cause constant pain when they work. And anyway, so I called them out today. I sold this Bobcat little plush, little circle plush. I think I got it at Uncle Mark's garage sale. I sold it for $11.99 plus shipping. I got in a big bundle of stuff where I'm already in the profit, so no problem there. But when I went and I got my root canal, like they were so gentle that I felt like no pain the whole root canal at all. Not even getting the Novocaine. They use this like topical thing and it just, it was a dream getting the root canal versus the crown that my actual dentist prepped me for. I went to a specialist for the root canal. I sold Lego Pirates of the Caribbean for five bucks plus shipping. DS, no case, no manual. But so when I went to the dentist today, you know, I, I knew they might have to numb me because they were putting the permanent crown on. They're taking off the temporary, putting on a permanent and doing like a little filler. And I was like, okay, so if they're gonna do a filler and stuff, they might have to numb me. And I, I talked to the assistant and I said, hey, you know, I went to the endo dentist and I felt like no pain at all because they use this like topical thing to make sure that when you did the Novocaine needle, it didn't hurt. And she's like, yeah, we have that. We use it on you. I said, well, you know, I, I have a hard time believing that because of the drastic amount of pain I felt when you guys did the Novocaine. She's like, oh, that's just Dr. So-and-so. He's not, he doesn't coddle his patients, right? He doesn't baby his patients. He doesn't coddle his patients, something like that. Uh, she's like, he just gets the job done. And I was like, well, what do you mean? She's like, well, he'll take the topical, put it in there, and then he pulls it out and he hits you with a needle. And you know, we've talked to him about it and told him he should really wait a couple minutes to let the topical kick in, but he said he doesn't have time for that. And you know, he just wants to get it done. <laughs> literally what she said to me and I was like okay and she's like huh he's a typical man and then she just walks away like <laughs> and I was like well okay so if he's gonna numb me could you put it on me she's like well they don't usually let us but maybe I will and like the, the assistant snuck the topical in there like three minutes before the dentist ever came in in case he numbed me and I feel like if he had done the Novocaine it wouldn't have bothered me much because I had that like already numbing me but he ended up not having to numb me at all but I don't know I don't think I'll be going back to that dentist. I, I don't know. I don't know if I'll negatively review them or anything. I just probably won't go again. But I mean, maybe I could kind of see it, right? This guy who ordered this phone grip thinks he got a plastic one, even though it's clearly metal. And he leaves a negative review and he's just like, yeah, I don't think this guy's a good seller. And he just walks away and doesn't want to deal with it again. If I was to leave a negative review for the dentist, I would just say dentist is pretty rough on customers. And this is true. After I got my crown, I felt like I had been beaten up like physically assaulted for an hour is how I felt when I was done with that. Like I was in so much pain. He was like ripping my head around, shoving things up into the gums, like super rough. And that's probably what I would probably give him low stars and say, you know, he hurt me. And if they were to reach out to me, could they do anything to get me to remove that rating? Maybe not. So maybe the feedback should stand. This guy thinks he didn't get the service that I offered. He thinks he didn't get a metal one of these. And so maybe I should have negative feedback. It is what it is. Sold the Squishmallow for 11.50 plus shipping. It's a little watermelon. And again, it doesn't really matter. One negative feedback out of thousands of positive is not a big deal. I think I have one neutral too. 
but I'm about to get another negative, and we do have to get that Rally Roots mystery box, so maybe we'll pull this order and go grab that. Uh, we'll do that very soon, because I don't want to forget. Okay, so we've got Diamond Dallas Page. Ooh, cool. So the other return I have is also that phone grip, but this was a different complaint. They said they got the ones with the red outline and not the all black one, which in my last video, I talked about the fact that I actually never owned the ones with the red outlines. They came out after I sourced my phone grips, so it, it just can't be that. Uh, it can't be the truth. And not only that, but theirs were all beaten up and looked pre-owned and were dirty and filthy and stuff like that. So clearly the buyer is not being honest. Uh, they probably had these and, you know, wanted to upgrade to the better quality one and are basically doing the old return, something different than what was shipped. And I don't know if there's anything I can do about this either. Check these guys out. Diamond Selects, DDP, and Jericho. I believe. A lot of these sold for $8.99 plus shipping. These are cool. That's a good buy. I think I got these on Whatnot for a buck each from Jimmy Old School Flips. So two bucks into nine. Not an amazing amount of money, but something. So based on your guys' feedback, you said something. You said that I could choose to not give 100% refund because I offer free returns, because I'm a top rated seller. I could do a 50% refund if I got an item back in a different condition than I shipped. And so I think I'm going to try that. But I think based on what this uh, eBay employee said to me about the other item, if I actually try tried it, they might just say, no, screw you. You've got to give a full refund because there's no way to prove you sent a non-red phone grip, right? Because what is the objective proof that I sent? I mean, there's these videos and I told her about the videos. I said, hey, I can actually show you a video where I ship it, where I pull the order. And she's like, yeah, but how do we know you didn't change it in between when you recorded the video and sent it? I don't know. Did I just get a tough eBay employee? It seems kind of aggressive. So I'm going to try it. I messaged that buyer and I said, hey, it looks like you're sending me different phone grips than the ones you ordered. I've never sold the ones with the red, nor have I ever owned them. And it looks like like yours are very damaged, the box is damaged, things like that. Are you sure you didn't order those from someone else and maybe you're confused or mistaken? Like I was trying to not be too accusatory, but also kind of call them out. I sold Duke Nukem Forever on PS3 for $6.99 plus shipping. I got this in a big bulk buy where I paid 25 cents a game. I have not received a reply from that buyer yet. But they've already sent back the two grips that I definitely didn't sell them. I don't know. What people were telling me in the chat to do was to only refund them 50% and don't refund their original shipping because they sent item back in different condition and I'm a top rated seller and I guess that's something you have the right to do, but I just feel like it's not gonna work. <laughs> I'll be honest, I have a strong suspicion that I'll be doing a video in a week saying eBay took my money or something like that because they're gonna like forcibly remove the money from my account because in their opinion, there's no way to prove that that's what I sent, blah, 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 blah. So bad experience with eBay feedback for me. Just kind of a scammy thing going on here, but not much I can do about it. Okay, so this is a Department 56 that sold. It says rest ye merry gentlemen, and it's a, a dude on a bench. Hand-painted accessory. Sold that for 10 bucks plus shipping. These little accessories do well. Uh, I need to go out to the car and get this mystery box from Rally Roots. And I also got something in my P.O. box. Let me um, let me pull one more order because it's on the way. <sighs> Might as well while I'm over here. NBA Jam on Genesis sold. And I think I got this in a whatnot auction as well. Sold it for 15 bucks plus shipping. The box doesn't stay closed, but someone wanted it anyways. Like I said, 15 plus shipping. Let me go get that. I'll be right back. Okay, I'm gonna lock my car back up. So here I am back in the garage. So I've got two packages. One is I think a package from a viewer, Canuck Surge, because I recognize the name and I don't know what it is. It was in my PO box. So we're gonna open that first and then we're gonna get to the mystery box from Rally Roots and see how we did with that as well. I'm just gonna use a key because I don't have a, a knife on me and keys usually work okay for eBay tape, but we'll see. I could totally see myself accidentally packaging, packaging my keys up with a, an eBay order by putting them on the table here. Ugh. Okay, let me put them over here so I don't mess it up. All right, so what did I get from Connect Surge? Oh, look at this. Wow, look at this. Connect Surge sent me DC Multiverse Batman, the Riddler, nice. And also Batman himself. Wow, thank you, Connect Surge. It's awesome, you didn't need to do that. Oh, and Lord of the Rings. That's uh, Legolas, right? It looks like Legolas, it doesn't say a name. It says Migo. Marty Abrams presents Migo. So this is a Migo? Yeah, Legolas. Anyways, yeah, that's really nice. Did he send a note? I do have a little action figure addiction, so Serge must know that about me. Oh, interesting. He had this like holding the box together. There's a note here. Oh, it's very long. A lot of words. Hello, Dave. First off, wish you and your family a Merry Christmas. I might cut some of this out. I'll read it all aloud and I'll, I'll maybe just cut some of it out because it is like four paragraphs. Hope you and your family have a Merry Christmas and a happy and most prosperous new year. I have been an avid watcher and subscriber of both your picker and flipper channel since early 2021. Oh, thank you. Where I was looking for something different than TV shows. Thanks to you and the other YouTube resellers, I, just started, I decided to start a side hustle in April of 2021 and it was a struggle because in Canada, our Canada Post has higher rates to ship anything bigger 
longer than two centimeters letter mail. After a few months, I found a niche in smaller items, but still sell larger items that are unique or are selling well. I've been an avid Trash to Cash podcast follower. That's our podcast. Since the beginning and never miss an episode, I learned so much about poop. <laughs> we also talk about reselling and eBay and stuff like that. But sometimes we talk about poop, which may serve me someday, but mostly enjoy the comedic side to all three of you. Even the odd reselling tidbits is helpful. The one thing I enjoy about your channels the most is the real life struggle while reselling. To be emotional in front of others is something that lacks in this day and age. I can relate to the commenter who said reselling saved their lives. I was at my lowest in 1996 after being diagnosed with some chronic issues and unable to work and almost checked out. But luckily my family noticed and helped me through it. That's awesome. During COVID, I had a similar low moment, but watching you and others succeed in reselling, I decided to jump into it. Even by mostly getting my items at our local flea market every Sunday, I have managed to make it work, even by paying more and making less profit, but it works for me. I've sold a couple thousand pins so far at $3 or more, but it's amazing how that adds up. Absolutely. So in ending this message, I decided to send you these action figures for your collection. Thank you. Batman is open and Lord of the Rings is coming off the card a little, but the last Riddler is sealed with only some box issues. I don't, I'm not that picky. I, I appreciate it anyways. Thank you again for all you do and stay real. P.S. I would also look for a new dentist. I've had four crowns done. Only one had a temporary that popped off. Yeah, I know. I know I need a new dentist. Thank you, Serge. I really appreciate that. That's awesome. So moving on to the mystery box from Rally Roots. And I will tell you this, the box itself is like one of the coolest parts. Let me open it with my trusty keys again. I know it's just shirts. Okay, so let, let me preface it. And maybe I didn't really get any like, I don't know if you can record someone else's whatnot stream or find get access to the recorded whatnot stream. Maybe I can, I'll, I'll look into that before I edit this, but I probably can't or shouldn't without permission. But I did take a couple screenshots so I can at least show you the idea. Look at this, I got a card. Thank you, Callie was here. And I think Callie is their, um, their videographer. So thank you Callie for packaging this. Callie's my daughter's name too, so that's awesome. All right, so this is the package. Oh, it didn't come with the cool whatnot box, dang it. I was hoping that they had it in like a whatnot mystery box thing that I was hoping I'd get. It said like Raleigh Roots on it, it was blue. I just thought it was kind of neat and I was gonna try to make one myself, but they didn't include that. Oh, well, I mean, I don't know. They did not, okay, so let's start off. These are shirts, okay? And they they advertised this, this is really expensive. Tell you what I bought here. This was a $750 mystery box plus tax. So I spent $800 for this. It was insane. It was a horrible life choice, but I wanted to test it out. I wanted to see if it was worthwhile. I wanted to see if it was worth reselling because here's the thing. They pitched it as $150 mystery box with a thousand plus value. And I'll be honest, they were opening up mystery boxes like this size. And in the boxes, there was like one to three shirts that people had already bought. And these mystery boxes were like $90 or $150. And I was like, oh wow, that's expensive. But then I looked and I saw this $750 option and it was a picture of six boxes. And I was like, oh, you get six for 750. That was my mistake. In reality, it just meant that the shirts in those boxes were more valuable. You get one box, but it's just got more valuable items in it. And it's not like it's more quantity. I thought I was gonna get like six boxes of shirts with one to three in it. So, and that's not their fault, really. I mean, I, if I had been listening, like I was in the car with my kids, I didn't have the volume turned all the way up. So that's totally on me. I don't blame them for that. But I ended up buying one box for $800, which I was a little sticker shocked when I found out it was one, bo one box, but the, the advertising in the whatnot auction said value of 1,000 plus dollars. So I was like, okay, so I could get the jackpot and get like $1,500 worth of items and resell it and double my money. And I'll also get to experience this. Maybe I'll get a shirt that I think is cool that I wanna keep. Cause these are like vintage single stitch things I don't ever find. So I was like, okay, I'm gonna do it. So here's what I got. And we're gonna look through and you guys can tell me if you think I got a good deal. I spent $800 on one, two, three, four shirts. <laughs> it's insane. I know, you know, there's a lot of like really uh, wealthy people who go spend 750 on one shirt. But I'm in the world where this is my expensive shirt. This one here, this Adidas one, I got like Kohl's. It was $34.99. It's the most I've ever spent on a shirt, except for these shirts. But anyways, I went to my PO box today. I picked this up four t-shirts <laughs> for $1,000. And I don't know if I did well or not. So this this is number one. And I'll tell you, the people in the stream were getting real excited. They're like, oh, that's so sick. Yo, that's so sick. I can't believe someone got that for only 750. That's, you know, I'm, I, I wouldn't be surprised if this smelled like vape. Yeah, it does smell like vape. Not surprising. <laughs> 
<laughs> is that like weird? <laughs> I don't know why it's like every single like vintage shirt seller I've ever like bought something from. It always smells like vape juice when you get the item. There's definitely a little vape juice smell. But anyways, this is a Grateful Dead shirt. It says 1990 heads on tour and it just says Grateful Dead. And then on the back it says summer 1990 Grateful Dead with special guest Austin Stadium. Anyways, the back hit. Yeah, they call that the back hit. This is one of these shirts. I mean, in reality, if it's really a thousand dollar plus box, these should each be worth at least $250 or one should be worth a lot more than $250 to not be false advertising. Now, if the box is only worth a thousand and my goal is to resell and I spend 800 and I sell them on eBay and pay 15% in fees, I'm gonna have 150 in fees and I'm gonna make 50 bucks. <laughs> So, you know, in retrospect, this impulse buy was not a good plan at all. Other than I thought it would be pretty interesting to make a video about it, see if it was, you know, honest advertising, see if you really got $1,000 worth of stuff. And I figured I could at least break even and maybe make some money. So that was kind of the hope was to break even, maybe make some money. Maybe I'll do better. Maybe I'll make a lot of money. We'll see. There's this one. This is a uh, Grateful Dead, Las Vegas, Deadhead, 1986. And it's got, uh, is that 1986? I don't know. 26? June 25, 24. Oh, it's three days, 24th, 25th, 26th, 1994 is the date on it. And these are single stitch. These are single stitch shirts. So these are legit old school. And you know, I was talking to Dark County Picker was watching the stream with me and they, you basically, you bought the mystery box, unknown what is it gonna be in there other than that it's gonna be some sick shirts. <laughs> and then they open it and they show you and then they pack it up and ship it to you. So I saw these, but it didn't really mean much to me because I don't know much about them. Uh, Jimmy Dark County Picker was on there and he sells shirts and he messaged me and said I got some real great item. Now whether or not that means to resell is a whole separate question. So this is another one. This is Las Vegas 1993 and it's got like a, I don't know, this picture on the back. I mean, I, I'll be honest. Maybe I should listen to a Grateful Dead song because I don't know if I could name even one. But anyways, I got this shirt. I know that's a fan. Maybe I'll maybe I should pause and listen to a Grateful Dead song. Hold on, let me let me just see if I like them. All right, I listened to 29 seconds of Sugar Magnolia and I conclusively can say I don't know. They might be okay. <laughs> I think I need to listen to more to really make a determination. It feels like 70s, 80s music, you know, like my mom would listen to, but it doesn't mean it's bad. Um, I would, maybe I'll try to listen to like a whole album or something. I know, I, all of you deadheads, as they call them, are very offended right now that I'm the one with these shirts, because apparently these are good shirts. This one is the other one, okay? This one says, bronze medal winner, Barcelona, 1992. Greg Spears, not fade away. And then on the front, it says Lithuania, and it's like a basketball skeleton. So these are the four shirts I got, guys, for it. $800 from Raleigh Roots. <laughs> I have no idea if that's good. I'm gonna do Google Lens and I'm gonna try to find some of these and see what they're actually worth. Uh, and if you don't know, I mean, I feel like most of you do, but Google Lens is literally an app called Google in the App Store. Google. And uh, every now and then I provide information. Click the little camera icon on your phone. Oopsies. You hit search with your camera. You take a picture of something and it'll help you find it and comp it and things like that. So this, that's not a really good picture of this shirt. Here we go. So there's one listed on Poshmark for 135. Oh, but it's sold out, it's sold out. But hold on, let me grab that. Yeah, so here's the Poshmark right here. That shirt sold for 135. Let's take a look on, oh, here's one in stock on eBay. Okay, so the seller is trying to get 400, but it's not sold and it's a size XXL. What size is this? Oh, I think he kept talking about the tag, liquid something, liquid blue XL. So I don't know if that's, I don't see that in this description. Hold on, I'm gonna look on eBay, guys. All right, so we've got a size large that sold for 160. We've got this one which is an XL that sold for 255, which that's good. We need them to be 255. We then have this one that sold for 125, which is really terrible. Why is that so little? Size large. It's on a Fruit of the Loom tag. Okay, see, I think the tag matters. I really do. Here's another XL that sold for 250. Let me look at the tag on this one, Anvil. So what's better, the Anvil or the Liquid Blue? I might need your help with this, guys. Hold on, let me look at what this other one that sold for 255. Let's look at the tag on this one. Fruit of the Loom. Liquid blue. Is liquid blue the tag, the thing gonna make, that's going to make the difference? Let's see. Gosh, I need your help, guys. I'm going to need your help. Uh, okay, so I would say there's a good chance I can get 250 for that. I don't know if the liquid blue tag makes it worth more, but it seems like this exact shirt has sold for 200 to 250 a lot. Look, okay, hold on. Hold on. This might be really good. This one sold for 380 and it says liquid blue in the description. XL liquid blue, $380 plus shipping. That's what that says there. So, I mean, that's the first one that had the liquid blue tag and I see it sold at 380. So, hey, hey, I might've done, that's good guys. If this is really half the value back, this might be the most valuable one, but this one might be 380. So tell me if I'm wrong. If you guys are like, 
you know, vintage clothes sellers, you, I'm sure you can help me uh, figure this out. But I think that liquid blue tag, he kept saying it. Rally Roots kept saying it. I don't know his actual name. Maybe it's, maybe it's on the box. Hold on. Ryan kept saying that liquid blue tag, liquid blue tag. So I think that's a really good sign that the liquid blue tag is a good thing. And if Ryan happens to be watching this, Rally Roots, how's it going? <laughs> Come on our podcast, Trash to Cash podcast. We want to have you on it. Everyone in the comments, if Ryan is commenting, you know, in here, just make sure you tell him or just go to his channel and say, hey, you should go on Trash to Cash podcast. Let's let's get him on there. Okay, so this Las Vegas shirt, uh, I cannot find with Google Lens. Let me try again. Uh, I don't see this one with Google Lens. Okay, so if that one's really worth 380, then to break even, we only need like 400 more dollars. And that's, you know, these shoes, shirts probably will be worth a little less. So let's see. Okay, since I can't find it with lens, I'm just gonna write Las Vegas single stitch 1993. This one's tag is not legible. I can't see. It's a pretty big shirt. I'm having a lot of trouble finding this one. Hold on. Here we go, here we go. I see one on Grailed. So this is this one here. Let me show it to you again. We do have more eBay orders to pull, guys. I'll cut this down so it's not aggressively long. In real life, this is taking me a very long time. On Grailed, someone has that listed for 454. That doesn't mean it's what it's worth. Can you see that? 454. So let me see if I can just copy. There's no solds on this as far as I can tell. Let me look at active listings. I can't find this one for the life of me. I really can't. Maybe you guys can help. Okay, so we'll come back to this or maybe you guys can comment below. So here it is again. For those of you who are pros, this is single stitch 1993. It's big. It's probably a double XL. Um, and we have to assume it's worth at least 40 bucks because it's a band T single stitch, but it might be worth more. Uh, maybe you guys in the comments can help me out. And then this one is a Las Vegas Dead Ahead 1994 single stitch. All right, I didn't count on these being this hard to comp. Really? My memory card's almost full? That's terrible. <laughs> I'm frustrated. I'm very frustrated because I thought I'd be able to comp these and now I know why I don't sell clothes because I can't find comps. Maybe that's a good thing. Maybe these are all super rare. I can't find this one either. Maybe I'll look a little bit more at the end of this video, but I really gotta get my orders pulled. And so I think I'm gonna pull my orders and come back. So basically we found one that we think might be worth 375 because it's on the liquid blue tag. And then we've got these three that I can't find at all. Not even remotely anywhere. And I don't know what's wrong with me because ah, normally I can comp stuff, but I'm having so much trouble comping these. Let's pull the rest of my eBay orders and then we'll come back to the value of those at the end. We're almost done with the eBay orders. Oh, it's so frustrating. I hate not being able to find something, especially when you think you comped something before. Like I thought I had taken a screenshot of that last one. This was like the one I got a screenshot of during the auction. And I thought I comped this. I did. And I just, okay, to be fair, I did find it in one spot. Let me show you the one spot I found it. Found it. Shop Thrilling, which I've never heard of. Shop Thrilling, there it is. And it's listed as an extra large. And on Google Images, it says it sold for $225. So I found that, but I thought I found it on eBay that day too, but I, I don't know, I don't see it. But anyways, that's a good sign. If it's, if it's not listed and there's no solds on eBay's and there's one sold on some random site called Shop Thrilling for 225, this is an XL. I could probably list it for 250 plus and see what happens. I would say since I can't find any other ones, unless you guys find one and send it to me, I'll probably list it for 300 because I can't find it anywhere else. So if I list that one for 370 because it's on the liquid blue tag and then that one for 300, we're at 670 and two t-shirts. So we might be doing good. We honestly might be doing good and I might be able to say, hey, this was a pretty decent mystery box. But well, let's, uh, I wanna spend a little more time trying to comp the other two at the end of this video so we can try to get a better idea of how we did. And maybe I'll send a picture to Jimmy, he might help. This little guy, you know, it's FIFA World Cup time, so it makes sense that the FIFA World Cup 2014 Brazil plushie sold for 20 bucks plus shipping. That's really good. I imagine maybe that was a stadium giveaway or something. I'm not really sure. It says Rare Fuel Co. Armadillo plush. And then Callie sold something out of FL88. Oh, should I probably tell her? She'll be excited. Um, and then Bath and Body Works sold out of FL59. Let me grab that too. And then we'll uh, we'll get Callie and let her pull her order. Uh, oh, and one of these Bath and Body Works, but I'm not sure if it's this one. Looking for Peach. That is not Peach. These do okay. I might have overpaid a little on it. I think I paid like three bucks each. Here we go. Pretty and Peach. Does it have a lid? Go check. There's a couple lids at the bottom in there. So the lid might be over there. Uh, yeah, no, it doesn't have a lid. So this one sold for $9 plus shipping. Uh, it's decent. It's not a ton of money, but I definitely made a profit. So that's something. I'll be right back. Let me get Callie. Callie, before I show you to the camera, can you tell me, did you happen to eat some sort of blue candy? Because your whole mouth like is a... blue. Mama bought me one at, um... Show him your tongue. Completely blue. 
<laughs> Cal, you sold something out of FL88, 88, which is right here, right here. And uh, it's a plushie. Can you see which one it is? She's, she, she didn't want me to tell her what she sold. She wanted to guess. This or this? It is the narwhal. Nice. That went to Dez. You say thank you, Dez? <laughs> thank you. Thank you, Dez. And Dez paid $12.60 for that. $12.60. So pretty good. Cool. Where'd you get the plushie? Did I give it to you at some point? I got it when I was little. Okay. Well, thank you. I'll pack it up for you and then we'll talk about money later. Can I help you? Wait, let's try the Commonwealth Picker thing. What does that give you enough money to do? She didn't say no. <laughs> Save a... Save up. Save a dollar. Save a dollar. Spend a dollar. Spend a dollar. And give Commonwealth Picker a dollar. Why? <laughs> I'm just kidding. Well, I want All right, teeth thank you. Blue. you. You have very blue teeth. I agree. Okay, thank you, Callie. All right, so up next, we sold a shake weight to Des Hardy as well, and that was $20 plus shipping. I paid two bucks for it, so a decent little profit on that. Those do okay. They're not worth a ton, but people do buy them, and they sell decently quick, so I don't know if it actually worked. It was always just like a meme joke. I don't know if it actually helps you get buff or not. Yeah, on the Rally Root shirts, I don't know, guys. I just don't know. I think we might have done okay. If those first couple are maybe worth 300 plus and we spent 800, we might be doing okay. I sold this Biltmore Estates of coffee mug for $9 plus shipping. Uh, I paid, there's, a, I made like a Facebook reel about it cause I got it for like a quarter and I didn't even have the quarter. <laughs> so I did like a, no, it was a, a TikTok. I did a TikTok where I was like, mom, can I borrow a quarter? <laughs> and then everyone made fun of me. I knew they would, that's why I did it. Cause it was so silly. Can I borrow a quarter <laughs> just for a cup to sell for $9, so. But yeah, this next item says it's an FL39, which makes absolutely no sense. Uh, and I'm not sure I'm gonna be able to find it because it's a cowboy hat. But how in the world would a cowboy hat hit in a, fit in a bin, hit in a bin, fit in a bin like that? So we might've lost this next item. Let me look up here. I feel like I put a cowboy hat up on the top here at some point, no? Okay, so this one might be hard to find. Man, I wish I had some more conclusive thing to say about this Rally Roots box. I know you guys are gonna know. All my all my friends watching are gonna be like super awesome clothes resellers and be like, Dave, duh, that's worth blah, blah, blah. But I don't know. And this is why it was an insane purchase. Basically, it's a gamble and I have a gambling addiction, I guess. Although I don't really. I shouldn't probably make light of gambling addictions because I know there are people with gambling addictions. But I probably shouldn't have done that. This is similar to what I sold, but I think it's too light. I think it was a darker brown. Let me look here. No, this might be it actually. Hold on, let me blow up the picture. No, it's slightly different. It's got a little like um, pin on the front. Audi partners. I don't, I don't rock the cowboy hat. This is the wrong one too, but it's the right color. So I'm missing closer. Uh, I'll have to find it after guys. I'll just show you a picture and I'll find it when I'm done. Uh, Eddie Bro's cowboy hat sold for $19.90 plus shipping. I always have bad luck. Like if it's a day where I have like a lot going on and I have to kind of pull the orders fairly quick, this ends up happening. <laughs> and it's been like an hour and 20 minutes of pulling orders because I've spent a lot of time comping those, those shirts. I've spent like a half hour trying to comp those so far. So time is money. Ooh, look at this. Disney's Daisy Duck sold for $6 plus shipping. It'll be interesting to see what that buyer says who bought the O-Snaps and wants to return them. And I messaged them and said they were wrong. Let me see if they responded yet. Oh, first of all, let's say this. We've sold a grand total of $347 worth of stuff in the last day and a half. So that's our kind of total there. Let me look here. One negative feedback still. So they haven't given me negative feedback. Let me check my messages. No, no response on the messages either. So, okay, I think my best bet is to take these shirts upstairs to my office and spend another 20 to 30 minutes comping them and then come back to you guys with hopefully some sort of an answer on whether or not Rally Roots screwed me over. <laughs> There's your thumbnail. Did Rally Roots screw me over? Did Rally Roots rip me off? Something like that. Yeah, see, like I'm always thinking of the thumbnail, you know? I don't, based on what I see so far, I think the answer is no, but I'd love to find at least one comp listed or unlisted or sold for these other two shirts. We've got a $350 comp, $375 comp for the first one, a $225 for the second one, but I think maybe we get more because I can't find any more listed. So right now we're at $600 for two shirts and I spent 800. So we got two left. If they're worth a hundred each, well then it would be false advertising because he said a thousand dollar value. So we really need them to be worth about a thousand total, which is what he advertised, a thousand plus in value. So if these are worth 200 a piece, that brings us right up to a thousand bucks. All right, yeah, which would be Good. So I just found a comp on Worth Point, but that means I've got to like pay money to find out how much it's sold for. Check this out. Right there, it's a large. Mine's an extra large. I'm pretty sure extra large is worth a little more money. Uh, let's see. Can I start a free trial? <laughs> let's see. $25.99. 
Okay, hold on, I'll be right back. I'm gonna make a free trial and see what this is worth. All right, so I got the free trial. It's like maybe my third free trial of worth point, but we're gonna find out here. Click here to see price. It sold April 10th, 200 bucks. See it? 200, okay. So that's not bad, $200 for that one. <laughs> and I can't find any listed. So we might be able to list it for 250 again because there's none listed. So that's good, guys. I think that's our money back. So 375 for the first one, at least 225 for the next one. That's 600 and then 200 for this, that's 800. Mind you, fees would take me down, but, but the promise was a thousand plus now. It could totally be argued that you could list these higher, like I could list this at 300, see what happens because there's none listed. So if someone wants it, they're gonna have to buy it from me on all of these pretty much with the liquid blue tag, like there's not really any competition. So that being the case, I mean, make sure you subscribe because on this channel, we talk about what sells. I'm gonna list these and I'm gonna list them high. I'll probably list the liquid blue tag at at least 400. I'll probably list the other one at 300 and I'll list this one at 300. And if you guys tell me I'm crazy, I could always bring the price down, but might as well start high. I spent a lot of money. Let it be cool if I could make some profit on this thing. Now we gotta find one more shirt guys and see if we really get to a thousand dollar value. Technically with the comps I've found, we're only at 800, which at least gets me my money back. But I wanna actually get that thousand dollars that was promised. I think it's promising because this shirt I haven't found yet. It's single stitch. It's Grateful Dead. It seems like Grateful Dead has good clothes. Again, I'm bringing the education. I figured out how to comp these on worth point at least. I'm just typing in Grateful Dead, the location, Las Vegas, and then the dates, the exact dates, right? So the dates on this are June 24, 25, 26, 1994. That's how I found the other one. I typed the exact date, just not a ton of detail, just Grateful Dead shirt, and then the date, and they seem to be pulling up on worth point. There's one sold in 2014 on this one. So I don't know if this one's uncommon, but let's check it out. I'm going to see with you. Click here to see price. 35 bucks. Uh oh. <laughs> now that is a very old comp, but that's not good. We got to find a better comp or uh, we're going to have to say this was not a good buy. Ugh. Let me check this. Hold on. Let's see if there's any listed on like grailed or anything. I don't see this one. Wait, let's look at the tag. This one is on a NFA, not fade away graphics tag. So maybe if I search Grateful Dead show shirt NFA. NFA 118 on Mercari, but it's a different shirt. Well, I mean, this is a make or break shirt and I can't seem to find a comp except for that $135 one, which I'm having tr trouble accepting $35 because it seems like these shirts are worth a lot more and that was eight years ago. I think the market has increased in eight years. So I don't know. <sighs> Guys, let me know. Did I do good? Did Raleigh Roots do me wrong? I don't think so. I think there's a very small chance this sells for less than a couple hundred bucks or at least a hundred, um, which would put me in 900. But I think I can get more for a lot of them because there's no others listed as far as I can tell. So I think a thousand dollars is about right on. Now, if I, if one of you guys finds a comp for this Vegas one, Grateful Dead, June 24th, 25th, 26th, let us know in the comments what you saw it worth. For all we know, this thing's worth 300 bucks, 200 bucks. If it's worth 200, that gets us to a thousand dollars right there on the conservative side but since they're not common, I could probably list them all higher. Maybe we can bring in $1,200. You're gonna find out if you subscribe, turn on the notifications, all that stuff. Good day, eBay sales. Fun opening this mystery box. Overall, I'm not disappointed with what I got. I think it's in line with what was promised. So yeah, not bad. Thank you guys for watching. Make sure you subscribe. We'll see you next. Oh, to be fair though, I don't really endorse any mystery box. Just remember, if you're gonna buy one, you're totally gambling. So, you know, buy at your own risk from anyone selling a mystery box and, you know, do it more. If you're gonna do it, do it for fun. It's probably not a good strategy for flipping, just like when you buy mystery pallets off Amazon. I've tried the Goodwill mystery pallets. It almost always goes poorly. So not a great strategy for reselling, but a fun experiment. Bye-bye.